Happy Christmas Day. Not the kind of Christmas Day we would have hoped for. Last year when we put our services online, we thought it would only be for one year. But sadly, this year we've had to do the same. Tomorrow we'll be gathering in the church for Boxing Day. But for this Christmas Day, our service is online, and I'm so grateful to all those who have helped prepare this, those who have spoken to cameras from the guild, from the church garden, for our young people, to Douglas and Andrew, putting bits together. It won't be perfect, but maybe the first Christmas Day wasn't all slick and perfect. In fact, it was rough and ready. But this Christmas Day, whenever you're watching the service, maybe you've already had time with your family, Maybe you're waiting for them to come. But for the next 30, 40 minutes, will you come with me as we think about the wise men who came following a star? But before we do that, let's sing together that great opening Christmas Day carol, O come, O ye faithful.
Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for the great truth we celebrate at Christmas. The fact that in Jesus, your light shines in the darkness and that nothing has ever been able to overcome it. Despite all that is sought to come against it, still the radiance of your love continues to reach out. We thank you for the light that dawned in the life of Zechariah and Elizabeth that transformed the future for Mary and Joseph and lit up the sky on the night of our Saviour's birth. We thank you for the light that flooded into the lives of the shepherds and that guided the wise men on their journey to greet the newborn King, who is the Saviour of all who will believe and trust in him. We thank you, God, for the light you've given us through the life and ministry of the adult Jesus, freedom for captives, sight to the blind, healing for the sick, comfort for the brokenhearted, peace after confusion, acceptance after condemnation, hope after despair, joy after sorrow. We thank you for the light that shines in our lives today and which leads us step by step on our journey through life, the lamp of your word, conversing with you in prayer, sharing in fellowship, the presence of your spirit, the living reality of Jesus. Lord, forgive us for the times we ignore your light and your direction and just go our own way. Not always realising just what we're missing or the damage we may be causing. Thank you that you are a relentless God, seeking us out when we stray, welcoming us back, helping us change, that we may bear your light to others. Thank you that you came to save and not to condemn us, and so we rejoice for your mercy and forgiveness. We offer you our praise and our adoration. Lord, shine in our hearts today, and may the flame of faith burn brightly within us, so that we in turn may bring the light of your love to others and in so doing bring glory and praise to you. And so hear us, Lord, as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of our great traditions in church is that during Advent we light a candle each week and we've been doing that for the last four weeks. And now on this Christmas day, we get to light the middle candle, the significant candle. Perhaps as I light the candle, you might want to join in with me in the words that will appear on the screen. The heavens are shifting. The troubled world waits. The light has come. May we at this Christmas time and in the coming year know the reality of Christ, the light of the world, who came, came at a time of darkness, but God kept his word. The light has come. For Advent, we've tried to think of the journeys that many of the characters in the Christmas story had to make. And today, we come to the wise men. Our Christmas cards will often show the wise men travelling on camels. And although the Gospel doesn't tell us how they travelled, it, it would seem reasonable. An awful long distance to travel from the east to Judea on foot. Camels were the best way. These men made the journey because they noticed something unusual in the skies that suggested to them that somebody of significance has been born. It will be a, a long journey and it has the potential to be a wasted journey 
or we might say a, a, a journey that ends in a wild goose chase doesn't end up where they thought it would. But somehow they made that long journey, convinced that what they saw in the sky connected to something I believe inside them that said somebody of significance was born. So let's read how Matthew tells their journey as we read in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard that he heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word. I mentioned earlier about Christmas cards and camels. And on those Christmas cards, there will be a depiction of the wise men. Um, Matthew doesn't tell us how many there were. We assume there were three because of the three gifts that are given to the baby. We're not told how, what they look like. If you've been to a nativity play, you'll often recognise the wise men because they'll wear kind of royal clothes. There's a sense of royalty, there's a sense of authority. These are wise men. But I wonder if you've ever asked, what is wisdom? Where could you find it? Are there any wise people around today? At a recent Guild party, I asked some of the people there those questions. What is wisdom? Have you ever met someone who is wise? Let's listen to what they had to say. Well, I think the definition of wisdom perhaps is someone who's able to pick out the important things and act on them and forget about all the trivia and the other things that we worry about all the time. I know people who are quite wise, but I don't think I know anybody who's very wise. A wise man once told me he didn't like committees at all, but he always thought that the best committee was a committee of two when one was on holiday. Wisdom is truth, beauty and goodness. I've met many wise people in my life who have helped me in lots of ways, not particularly choosing anyone, you know. I had attached to one of my folders a prayer and it started, 
father I have knowledge, so will you show me how? How to use it wisely? And I can't remember the rest of the words, but it was about making the world a better place. But the final line was, knowledge comes from learning and wisdom comes from you. And I graduated many, many years ago, but over all those years, I have often thought about that definition of wisdom. We can learn a lot from books or from watching television or from reading, and that's our knowledge. But I really do believe that wisdom is a gift from God. And without sounding too romantic, I think my husband is the wisest person I know. Your question is again? What is wisdom and have you ever met a wise man? Wisdom is a, something that you gather through the past, the present and the future. Have you ever met a wise woman? Uh, is there any of not wise? Good answer. Were you surprised that what people said about wisdom. I wonder what your answer would have been. I hope that as you're watching the service, you've had an opportunity to open at least a present today. I wonder if it surprised you, or perhaps you knew already, you shook it, you sh felt it. Perhaps you had dropped hints to the person who was going to give you the present about what you wanted. Or perhaps when you saw the tag on the present, you knew straight away what it would be because they always give you the socks or the hankies or the deodorant. You appreciate, but maybe the surprise is gone. And maybe sometimes with the Christmas story, that element of surprise has gone. We know it so well. We know from our reading in Matthew's Gospel that the wise men had an inkling that the one that they were coming to find would be someone of significance. And so with a sense of logic, they go to the palace, the place where royalty dwelled. They go to the place of power. But the one that they're looking for isn't found there. And as you know, they're led to a different place. They will find the one they're looking for but they will be surprised at his surroundings. So let's pause uh, and sing together that carol that brings us to us the wonder of the main figure in the story, Child in the Manger. I don't know about you, but the older I get, 
the more questions I seem to have. But thankfully I have a wise person nearby, one who understands me. This time of the year is usually very stressful, but for many of us the stress of COVID has just put our stress levels up higher and higher. Anne, how do you do these lateral flow tests? Uh, I found the instruction book. Just have a look at that. It's all very straightforward. Thanks, Anne. Oh, no. Anne, what is the number of Hark the Herald Angels? I've got to put it into the service. Here's the hymn book. Check the index at the back. Oh no, Anne, I need to send a last miss miss minute Christmas card to the butchers. Where do they stay? Have you checked the address book? We'll do that later. Oh no, Anne, I did promise to make that vegetable soup that you all like. How do you do it? You'll find the ingredients in the recipe book, funny enough. Thank you. Oof. How do you do recordings on your phone? Ah! <laughs> Ask the daughters! Oh, no. When I asked about wisdom at the guild, we got a whole lot of answers, didn't we? That's understandable because wisdom is one of those words that can mean different things. Sometimes the answers to our hows and our wheres and our whats can be almost easily answered. Just get a book, get a manual. Or sometimes the answer is, well, you just ask somebody who is wiser than you. Somebody who's gone through the things. Someone who's more comfortable using their phone. You get wisdom by asking for their help. But maybe there's some questions in life where the book alone is not enough. When we listen to our story from Matthew, what are the wise men looking for? The question is, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? They are seeking someone who they will worship. Is this out of respect or reverence? Is there a sense of diplomacy or is there something deeper going on? They make the long journey and they get to the palace. They ask their question and the question disturbs Herod. And he turns to his advisors and they actually give an answer, interestingly, from the sayings of prophets of long ago. Now, of course, the advisors didn't go to a bookshelf and pull a book down because they would have written on scrolls, but they found words, they find an answer, and they pass it on. The men from the East are willing then to follow the answer up and actually make another journey, not as long as the one they'd made to Palace and Herod's Palace, but they actually now go on to Bethlehem, for they are genuine in their searching. They've asked the question and they want to know an answer. But sadly, Herod and the advisors who ironically have the answer, don't seem to be that bothered. Their main concern is get rid of a rival. People often say that they are open to finding out more, they ask questions, but the more they get closer to an answer, it may be they back off because they might see that the answer is not what they expected or it could be challenging, it could be uncomfortable. The wise men follow on, they make the journey and they find a child. Matthew says nothing about the surroundings. Rather, his focus is on the fact that these wise men bow down and worship and hand over gifts. And it would appear that their journey was not in vain. I love books and all the books that Anne gave will give me answers to those particular questions. I've met many clever women and men. Lots of questions have been answered. I think at the age of my life now, I know some things I didn't know 30, 40 years ago. But none of them have ever come close 
to giving me what Jesus Christ offers. The baby will be the teacher who offers insight into how to live. But he's also the teacher who lives out the wisdom. He's the one who will reveal love and mercy and power. He offers truth about God and life. He's unique. But I want to pause with what might seem a strange thing to say. Coming to the manger is not necessary, is necessary, but it's only the start. Is it possible that we get drawn to the manger and think that that is the end of the journey? Now, while you ponder that, let's remind ourselves that these wise men did find a king, not in a palace, but in an outhouse. That these wise men handed over incredible gifts, but that the king that they met offers them and us something even more amazing. So let's reflect together in the words of the hymn, King of Kings, Majesty. Our granddaughter is now two and is beginning to show some sense of recognition that Christmas can be special. Um, recently she was asked whose birthday is it and she says it was Jesus. She's developed another trait. Um, somebody bought them an advent calendar and her parents, and I'm not going to make any comment about their wisdom, decided that on the odd days Hannah would get to eat the chocolate and they would eat on the even days. But a two-year-old doesn't get that. 
and every day there is a demand for the chocolate. I wonder what your memories are of Advent calendars. Maybe you remember them when all you did each day was open them and behind the number was a scene, a picture of the Christmas story. I wonder what Advent trees mean to you. If you've been down in the church gardens, you will know that we've put up four trees with six panels on each. And each day the panels have been revealed to show a picture. Last week I went down to the garden to take some footage of the trees, just in case you hadn't seen them, and I had the opportunity to ask what people's reactions had been to those trees. And I was also able to ask some of the people there, what did Christmas mean to them? Hope you enjoy this short video. Hi Jane, we're down at the church. Why are there trees in the garden? Well, each tree is supporting a day of Advent and when you come to the fourth tree and then the first bit at the end that shows the day of Advent. Okay. Have people, what's been people's response? People have been really interested at the idea of it all and the creativity involved yeah. um, and they've been really interested in the pictures and asking who, who, the, who the people are in the pictures right. and do we know the people in the pictures. Yeah. But they've also been impressed by the fact we've included things like the emergency services and the support networks around about. Good. This is on Saturday, next Saturday's Christmas. What does Christmas mean for you? Christmas means for me, now that we've decided to stay at home a bit more on Christmas Eve, a Christmas Day, a bit more of peace actually because we used to do a lot of running about when children were young. We don't have so much running about now so it is more peaceful. It's just a chance to sit and reflect and think about the real reason of Christmas behind all the sort of normal commercialism and busyness. Hi Jim and Shona, why are we standing in front of trees? I think it's for Christmas time and also because we want to be a presence in the centre of Perth yeah. at busy bus stops. Yeah. What do you think of the trees? I think they're wonderful, a great innovation this year. <laughs> they're beautiful, they really are, and I think people will stop and look. I was going to ask, are people stopping, do you think? And yes, yes yeah. people are. Yeah. And this is Saturday, next Saturday is Christmas Day. Have you any thoughts about what Christmas will be for you next Saturday? Christmas for us will be slightly different this year, because our daughter-in-law's brother's coming from America on Tuesday with a family, and we're just a bit hesitant about having too many households. Yeah. But Anything else, Shona? Uh, no. That's all. That's all. Marjorie, you just had a look at the pictures. What's yeah. your thoughts? I think they're tremendous. They've put, put a lot of work they've put in and a lot of thought. Yeah. Uh, trying to connect the Christmas story with, you know, everyday life yeah. today, it's good things and it's bad things. So I really think that they've done a great job. Good. And I just hope a lot of people come in and, and see it, but it's, you know, getting folk to come is difficult. But uh, yeah, I hope, I hope a lot of people come uh, and see it and appreciate it. We're here on Saturday, a week before Christmas Day. What will Christmas mean for you? I think Christmas is, is a lot about memories, you know, a wee back in childhood um, and, and family. I think that's important. Um, it, it was also came more to life to me because I've actually visited Bethlehem and the area around about so that gives me an idea of what it was well kind of what it was really like Great. And, and that brings it to life a wee bit thanks Marjorie appreciate it. Heather we're in front of these pictures on trees on the trees what, what do you make of the pictures pictures well I think they're uh, they are lovely and um, they're just, for me, they're like a journey through life. Yeah. And uh, this particular picture, my favourite is there were shepherds camping in the neighbourhood. I, I think it's just lovely. We always think of the Lord as our good shepherd. Yeah. And uh, I think we, you know, it just gives you hope for the future. Okay. Uh, Heather, we're doing this a week before Christmas Day. Have you any hopes for Christmas Day? Uh, just to be joyful and uh, I have some family with me and it's just really happiness and uh, the hope for the future and the love of Christ. Sally, can you tell me why we have put these pictures and trees in the church garden? Well, 
obviously because of all the restrictions we've got we weren't really able to have a welcoming open church this year but we wanted to make a statement to the city about our faith and about what it means to, to have Christmas. Last year we did the Christmas card to the city so this year we wanted to do an advent calendar to let people think about what does the Christmas and the coming of the Christ child really mean. Is it how have people reacted who have come in? Well, it's been quite interesting. Some people have said, why have you not put a story on all the panels so yeah. that we know what they all mean? Um, and we talked about that a lot because um, th there, is a, there is a logic to doing that. But at the same time, we wanted people to react to the pictures themselves and make their own story out of it yeah. and to discuss what they were seeing and what it meant. Mm -hmm. The theme is creation to Christmas creation um, at the beginning and then there's a bit about well what have we done to creation what do human beings do in creation and the salvation that comes from the Christ child and the repair of creation good you mentioned there people want to know what does it mean my last question might be Sarah then what does Christmas mean to you oh gosh Christmas means so many different things doesn't it because there's the whole family thing about Christmas and memories of Christmas past and things that aren't um, happening this year which I think is particularly poignant because there's so much that we can't do this year so um, we, we can't be together a lot as we would like to be um, but at the bottom line is if you like Christmas is about repair and hope and things getting better hope for the future which is what Jesus uh, ultimately brings us is hope for restoration and for repair of creation and ourselves in the future. Thanks very much, Sally. I spoke a few moments ago about our granddaughter, and there is something special about being around children at Christmas time. Of course, we know Christmas is for all ages, but there can be something happy and joyful if we are privileged enough to be around some young people the excitement of opening the presents. The past year has been hard for everybody and we must remember our young people for whom school and nursery has been so disrupted. As a church we've missed seeing our, our young people in person, although many of them have made commitments to join with us over Zoom. We invited some of them to be brave enough to make a, a short recording telling us about what they were looking forward to for Christmas. So thanks to those who were able to find the time to do so. Again, enjoy listening to them and seeing them as they tell us about what they're looking forward to this Christmas. This is Holly and Susie and we're going to be saying what we're looking forward to most this Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas dinner and I'm also looking forward to opening presents and spending time with family members. And Susie. I'm looking forward to getting presents and Christmas lunch. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, it's Rebecca. Hi, it's Elizabeth. And what I'm most looking forward to about Christmas is spending time with family. And what I'm most looking forward to about Christmas is spending time with family, opening presents and eating pigs and blankets. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. Bye. So, our wise men have arrived. After what was probably a two-year journey and a long search, they have found Jesus, the one born to be king, the one to whom they bring their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, as they bow down to worship. Let's just take a moment to think on those gifts and what we discover about the search of the wise men and the answer they found. Firstly, gold, the sign of wealth and success and kingship, a symbol of power and the ability to buy what you want, a symbol in ancient times of prosperity and God's favour. The travellers in bringing gold were people of wealth. They had those things and they were still in search of and need of a saviour. Frankincense. A symbol of mystery and wonder. 
in ancient times associated with priesthood, being a mediator between God and his people. Frankincense was used in worship as a symbol of God's presence and the mystery of his being, creating a smoke when burned. The travellers seemed to realise that even finding the one born to be king, there was and still is mystery, still so much to be discovered and learned. Frankincense or incense, also the sign of presence. It's not the presence itself. So they had to encounter Jesus themselves. Myrrh was used as a painkiller and for embalming. It pointed to Jesus' death and resurrection and perhaps also was an indication that the travellers wanted to gift this expensive gift to show that they valued his life and wanted to shield and protect the king from pain and to ensure a proper burial when his life came to an end. No matter how well-meaning and how much these wise men sought to honour the newborn king, what they brought was woefully inadequate in the face of the king God has actually given us in Christ Jesus. Born into poverty, with no desire for riches or power, but generous in love, in mercy, in forgiveness, siding with the poor and the powerless, and putting the incredible riches of God's kingdom at our disposal. Growing up to challenge and remove all the barriers that, they do, that had been put in the way of real worship, allowing us into the most holy place, the place of God's presence, no symbols needed, enabling us to speak to our awesome and holy God as a loving dad, God with us, among us, dwelling within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rejecting any attempt to numb his own pain, but embracing it for our salvation, so that by his wounds we can be healed of the pain and the consequences of sin and evil. There are riches and a real relationship that heals us to be found in the one to whom these gifts were brought. But perhaps not in the way that these wise ones thought. The answer had been found, the promise had been delivered, the light had dawned, a son had been born, the one who was to be there and our saviour. But at this stage it had not yet been fully realised, it hadn't become a reality in their lives. The wise men, if they wanted to really pay homage to Jesus, they would have had to follow his progress as he grew up, to discover what his kingship was like, his presence, his teaching, his sacrifice on our behalf. Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection were not at all what they might have expected and they would have had to still worship when he didn't meet their expectations and they would have to hold on to see that he exceeded those expectations in ways that they would not have been able to fathom. And so it is with us when we first discover Jesus and even after many years of journeying with him we also need to keep journeying into discovering more about who he is, how he disappoints and challenges and ultimately exceeds our expectations and gives us so much more than we could ever think, dream or imagine if we embrace the mystery and the wonder and keep seeking him, keep following him, keep worshipping him. Let's pray. Lord God, you are light in our darkness. You are purpose in our wandering. You are revealed in the angel's greeting. You're known in the acceptance of Mary. You are felt in the care of Joseph. You are received in the following of the shepherds. You're given in the gifts of the wise men. What a blessing you are, Lord. We praise you. 
Amen. As we come towards the end of our service, I am grateful to all who have made this possible. Uh, Andrew and Douglas, Jan, Katrina, Anne, members of the Guild, folks in the garden, our young people. If I'm honest, I would have preferred to have met in the church and have live interaction, but it just isn't possible with the protocols around cleaning. Sometimes our plans are disrupted and we just have to make the best of the situation. The journey of the wise men was not in vain and they returned home full of joy. But we have been reminded that finding the baby was not the end, but really the beginning. The beginning for discipleship is about growing and following Jesus throughout life. We may pack away our decorations in the next days or so, but let's not pack away Christ. I do pray that you have a good Christmas and can enjoy not only this day, but the coming days. For those of you who are able, we'll meet tomorrow in the building for a short service. Please bring any toys or gifts that you have been given so that we can share your joy. Our final carol starts with the story of the wise men. But in one of the verses, we are reminded that the very day, that this very day, is an act of worship too. So let's sing that closing hymn, As With Gladness, Men of Old.
Christmas Day benediction. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the wise men, and the peace of Christ himself. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. Happy Christmas.